speaker will be uh, Professor Mikhail Shijak, with the uh, chair of this conference. And uh, he's from the uh, Institute of Mathematics of the Czech Academy of Sciences here. And the title of his talk will be Anthropic Principle in the Local Hubble Expansion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will talk about Anthropic Principle in the Local Hub Expansion. The co-author of this talk is Professor Lorenz Sommer from the United States, who was <laughs> who is our chairman now. Uh, so, local Hubble expansion ex can explain a, a number of classical paradoxes, such as faint young sun paradox, the very large orbital momentum of the moon, formation of Neptune and the Kuiper belt, uh, an unexplained residual in orbit of Neptune, rivers on Mars, the tidal catastrophe paradox of the moon, and many other uh, things, for instance, uh, the uh, say, uh, synchronous rotation of uh, Iapetus, this is the moon of Saturn, and, and so on. And uh, also, which I have found quite recently uh, in the book by Professor Taganov, Systematic Errors in the Right Accession of Mercury and Venus. Uh, so we will present several geophysical, heliophysical, uh, climatological, paleontological, geochronometrical and geometrical and computational and astrobiological and astronomical observational arguments. So this is very, uh, say, interdisciplinary approach to this, uh, uh, say, topic. So recently we published with Professor Sommer uh, a book about anti-gravity. Anti it was uh, just uh, 100 years uh, after uh, Einstein uh, developed his theory on gravity, but I would like to emphasize that these anti-gravity forces are extremely small, and this is only secondary effect of uh, gravity, as we shall see. So the observed uh, value of the Hubble constant is 70 kilometers per second uh, per uh, megaparsec, and if you recalculate this value to one astronomical unit, you get such a huge number, 10 meters per year per astronomical unit. So it must be uh, somehow, in my opinion, observable also in solar system. And moreover, you can find that each cubic meter of the space, in average, increases its volume uh, about 2.0.2 uh, 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 cubic millimeters per year. So from this data, you can easily calculate that each cubic meter of the space uh, uh, 4.5 giga years ago has increased in average its volume at least twice up to now. Yes, in average, everything is average. And I will, uh, in particular, deal with the solar system, which is sufficiently isolated from the influence of uh, other stars. So some indications for the local anti-gravitational forces between Earth and Mars, uh, between Earth and Mars, uh, Moon. Uh, it was already a subject of the talk of uh, uh, Yuri Dumin. So uh, the measured. Uh, distance between Earth and Moon increases by 3 centimeters point uh, 84 centimeters per year. But by Newtonian mechanics, uh, you can explain only 2.13 centimeters per year. So if you uh, recalculate again the mean distance uh, or the Hubble constant to the Earth Moon distance, which is this number. So you get such a uh, number which is comparable to uh, those tidal for, uh, forces and uh, the measured, so, so 2.57 centimeters per year per uh, distance, uh, Earth Moon distance is such a number which is comparable to uh, the measured speeds, but the difference between the measured and Newtonian, say, uh, contribution gives uh, 1.71 uh, centimeters per year, which is unexplained. So we can say that the expansion speed of the universe 
is almost equal to the recession speed of the moon. So if you want to explain to somebody how our universe expands, so Hubble expansion is approximately like uh, the, this recession speed. <coughs> and moreover, if you take into account this unexplained uh, uh, value and you divide it by uh, this value, which is uh, the mm, uh, Hubble constant, so you get that the local Hubble expansion is approximately two-thirds of the current Hubble value. Yuri Dumin in uh, 2003 derived such a value. Later he improved this value to that. But similar values were al also obtained by many other uh, people, including, uh, for instance, the book by uh, Professor Taganov. Uh, so there was this graph already in, my, in the previous talk that the uh, luminosity of our sun uh, started at 70% and now uh, there is 100%. This is relative luminosity and here is minus 4, 5 giga years and here is uh, today. So uh, since the sun is the star of the main sequence, its luminosity has increased approximately linearly. I don't, I don't know if it was linearly or if it was convex or concave, yes, but uh, linear function is a good approximation. And uh, we are not able to measure the distance between the uh, sun and earth absolutely exactly like between the moon and earth because the barycenter of solar system travels uh, uh, around uh, such a complicated trajectory and the barycenter moves every day 1,000 kilometers, uh, kilometers per day approximately. So it's difficult to measure some meters yes, per, per year. Uh, so one uh, possible explanation uh, of the Feintian paradox is that the ecosphere, where is our Earth, uh, slightly expands. So if the luminosity of the sun would be more than 5% larger or 5% uh, smaller, then photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis would be not possible. And uh, ecosphere for that case, yes, these are some, say, uh, given numbers, uh, would be uh, in this uh, ring, which corresponds to these values. And uh, if you just consider some theoretical optimization problem, what is the speed of, uh, or the recession speed of the Earth from the Sun such that you would get constant solar flux, yes? Because the uh, luminosity increases. So what is the speed? And uh, to get, uh, this is solar constant, yes? And uh, uh, by some optimization problem, you easily find, you just only, uh, say, uh, investigate some rational function, you get 5.2 meters per year. So if it is 5.2 meters per year, then uh, the local Hubble expansion is 0 0.52 of the uh, uh, normal Hubble constant. We proved together with uh, uh, Larry Sommer such a theorem. Uh, so the average recession speed V of the Earth from the Sun. So if it lies in the interval of the, in this interval, it, it lies in this interval if and only if the luminosity function changes at most about five percent. This means that the Luminosity, which depends on time, is uh, standard solar constant plus minus 5%. And this holds not only during the last 3.5 giga years, but also in the future, in the next uh, 3.5 giga years. So we needn't be afraid that our oceans will evaporate, <laughs> evaporate yes. Uh, and so on. Of course, uh, if we neglect global warming, which <laughs> I hope will be uh, stopped. So 
Now a question arises if this local Hubble constant uh, is some uh, uh, argument uh, which supports uh, uh, the anthropic principle. I would like to recall that anthropic principle, weak, its weak formulation says that uh, all fundamental physical constants have just such values that, that enable uh, the origin of light. And the magnitude of H0 log seems to be just right for an almost constant influx of the solar energy during the last 3.5 years. As it was mentioned in the, my, in the previous talk, uh, there were liquid oceans uh, 4.35 giga years ago. And uh, uh, so there were uh, uh, very stable conditions during the last 3.5 giga years guaranteeing the existence of life, that it continu continually uh, existed. Uh, in the paper by Linewaver and Schatzmann, there is a temperature of ocean, so in, uh, uh, say, 400, uh, uh, pardon, uh, sorry, uh, four, four giga years ago, the temperature of oceans was extremely high, almost 100 uh, degrees Celsius, which uh, in fact contradicts to this, yes, because we had small <laughs> uh, luminosity. So uh, maybe that the recession speed is even higher, not only uh, five meters per uh, year per astronomical unit, but maybe seven or, or so. So I have another argument uh, which uh, was uh, obtained by uh, Veya Zhang, who was uh, one of the uh, member of our scientific committee. So this, I will show you now another argument uh, that uh, the distance between Earth and Sun increases approximately six meters per year. So there are several papers on uh, Earth's uh, paleo rotation. Uh, these are here. This is a uh, quite well investigated topic. Uh, and uh, we, and uh, we, for instance, we know that uh, uh, in Devonian era, uh, the year has uh, approximately 400 years. This is classical paper which appeared 50, more than 50 years ago. And Veya uh, Zhang and his colleagues, they published very interesting papers on measurements of growth patterns on fossil corals. Uh, and uh, so this is some Devonian coral. If you magnify it, you can see here some small layers. And if you again magnify it, you again see some small layers. So every day there is some very tiny layer, which is only several uh, uh, micrometers uh, thick. And from calculation of these layers, they found, for instance, that uh, in Devonian era, uh, which was approximately uh, 400 uh, mega years ago, uh, the every day has, uh, sorry, every year has approximately 400 days, yes? More days than we have now. And now we can use these data together with classical uh, Kepler law. So uh, the length of the year is the number of days times the length of the day uh, in seconds. So this is uh, the length uh, of the day today in seconds. This is the number of years. And there is some term where, uh, which characterizes the slowdown of Earth's rotation. The Earth's rotation slows down, so we must here uh, uh, subtract some term. So since we know the number of days, we can uh, uh, we know this value. And if you uh, th this is known, this is gravitational constant, this is uh, solar mass, and this we of course know. So from this equation, we can calculate uh, R, capital R. This is simple relation. And if you do that, you get such a graph. So uh, today, uh, uh, the 
distance between Earth and Sun is approximately uh, 150 million kilometers. But five uh, uh, million years ago, it was lower, the distance, according to the Kepler's law. And if you uh, take this speed, this, this uh, distance is 3 million kilometers. And if you divide it by 500 uh, uh, mega years, you get 6 meters per year. So it uh, uh, nicely illustrates that uh, uh, there is some local uh, so expansion from biological data, from biological clock. And uh, a very similar idea, uh, which is, uh, uh, is an in independent analysis of growth patterns on fossil corals from lunar data. I will not explain the details, but again, his, uh, their uh, strategy is based on Kepler's third law, and they uh, uh, know what was the number of lunar months and so on, because in their patterns they investigated thousands of patterns from the whole world. So this is a typical lunar band and you can calculate how many days was in each lunar band. And by a similar trick you get such a graph. So this is again the current value of the say air sun distance and here how it looked like uh, for uh, uh, sorry 600 million years ago and if you divide these two numbers you get seven meters uh, and the local Hubble uh, constant is uh, 0 0.7 times another argument I found in the book by uh, Professor Taganov again independent uh, I really recommend to you to read it uh, there are, uh, we should eliminate some other possibilities for large recession speed. So if you calculate it, uh, if you do some estimates, so you, you can find that the solar radiation cause, causes only uh, approximately 10 centimeters per year. The decrease of the solar mass, which would also have, of course, influence uh, on the, say, uh, trajectory of Earth, so due to nuclear reactions and plasma outbursts from the sun yields only 1.4 centimeters per year so it is absolutely negligible tidal forces from the sun three centimeters per year uh, so uh, here i can uh, shortly estimate how much dark energy is in fact generated if uh, by air per year so again, uh, using the Kepler third law, uh, we can easily find that this is this value. And if you take into account that the increase is roughly 5.2 meters per year, then the total energy generated by our Earth per year is such a huge number. And this corresponds approximately to three mega uh, sorry, 3,000 uh, three uh, terawatts. So this is perpetuum mobile, in fact. Yes? Uh, our Earth is generating, uh, or the local uh, cosmological expansion, in fact, generates energy for free because our system is uh, quite isolated from uh, the, the other stars. So why the other authors get much smaller values of the recession speed. So, for instance, the famous paper by Krasinski and Brumberg, uh, they uh, proposed that the recession speed is only 15 centimeters per year, and Pitiva also got the same value. But they are solving Newtonian system. There, in this first paper, there is 62 parameters, so they do not take into account any, say, influence of dark energy or so. So completely Newtonian system. Cooperstock and other, they derive a very tiny acceleration of the years. Uh, there is exponent minus 47 meters per uh, square, uh, uh, squared second. Uh, here is a, another very tiny exponent, but I would like to emphasize 
that this uh, concerns the acceleration. Uh, we uh, don't, uh, I agree that the acceleration is extremely small, but the linear expansion is large. So uh, I would like to show it in this picture. So this is a standard graph of the evolution of uh, expansion function of the universe. So this is this uh, blue line, this is linear function, this is Hubble constant, so this is, uh, these are the first stem from the Taylor expansion, and the green graph correspond to this uh, term, a uh, very quadratic term, for deceleration parameter minus 0 0.6, and uh, the cosmological constant is hidden in this term. But the author, they didn't, uh, they didn't take into account that this term can be large, yes? Uh, moreover, the, this red graph illustrates the uh, normalized expansion function satisfying the Friedman equation. We know the uh, initial data or final data here, so we can integrate it back and get uh, such a uh, value if you use, use standard uh, Friedman equation. So now let me present another argument that uh, our solar system expands. So, Mars must have been closer to the sun to have liquid water. So the current average temperature on Mars is minus 63 Celsius. However, the uh, average temperature and atmospheric pressure on Mars must have been significantly higher three or four billion years ago. And Mars also must have been much nearer to the sun to have liquid water on its surface. So let me give you a few pictures first. So uh, there are some rivers on Mars, and from uh, position of these craters, we can found that there were really uh, uh, rivers uh, three or four billion uh, giga years ago, because you, we can calculate this is statistical just uh, by statistical methods. Uh, there is sand, uh, which was, uh, this picture was obtained by the Curiosity mission. There is another beautiful example by Curiosity mission that uh, uh, in Crater Gale there are sediments, and what is interesting, all these sediments have almost the same thickness, so this is uh, which uh, physical process could produce such a wonderful periodicity, yes. Uh, uh, so there is, uh, I think it is absolutely clear that there were rivers on Mars. And due to snow and ice in regions away from the polar caps and due to clouds, the albedo of Mars was higher than at present. At present, this is this value, but since there were clouds, the albedo was higher. So this implies that more solar energy was reflected back into space. And we know that uh, the luminosity of the sun three or four billion years ago was approximately 75% of uh, current value. So let us calculate what was the, say, uh, luminosity, solar luminosity on Mars. So this is the 75%. And here this is solar constant, standard solar constant on the Earth. And since the luminosity decreases with the square, so this is, uh, in fact, astronomical unit divided by the uh, distance uh, Sun-Mars, yes? And if you calculate this, you get that the uh, luminosity, uh, that the solar constant divided by three, which is extremely low temperature. And at such a low temperature, it is impossible to have rivers on Mars, even though there would be greenhouse effect. I don't know which one. So let me now uh, show you another argument based on uh, Stefan Boltzmann law. So uh, the current temperature of, uh, on Mars is uh, uh, 62. This follows from the Stefan Boltzmann law. But also, this is measured uh, temperature by uh, Vikings and uh, uh, Curiosity and so on. So this is Mars, here is the Earth. 
If we would, uh, so Rs is minus 14, but because here is a greenhouse FS, which is approximately 30 degrees, so the average temperature on Rs is uh, about 15 degrees. But since the luminosity was lower, these numbers uh, are also smaller here. So uh, at such a temperature, uh, no greenhouse effects can explain uh, uh, rivers on Mars. And these rivers on Mars are not only at equ near equator, but they are between 50, 50s and uh, minus 50s parallel. Yes, so it, it is a huge, large area. There is also there was ocean in the northern pole and so so. Mars could move further from the sun by an amount of at least 30 million kilometers during the last four giga years. Maybe this number is even higher, so this four is dead. This is the uh, uh, local Hubble expansion. This is five meters uh, per astronomical unit per year. And this is the ratio between uh, uh, radius of Mars and, uh, and the Earth. So I will present now another uh, example which can be found in the solar system. And these are fast inner satellites. And uh, uh, they have not crashed on their mother planets. Uh, there are uh, 19 known satellites that are below the stationary orbit. So they rotate more uh, by higher angular speed than the planet itself. They, they, this is their list. We also know some extrasolar planets which are below uh, the uh, stationary orbit. And uh, so by this broken line, uh, the, the, it is indicated the stationary orbit. So these are the satellites which are below the stationary orbit. And what is interesting that all these fast satellites move in the same direction on circular orbits with almost zero inclination. So this means that they, uh, at least some of them, are there for a very long time. And assuming that their approaching speed would be one or two centimeters per year, like Phobos, for instance, we found that they should be uh, 40, uh, 45,000 to uh, 90,000 kilometers closer to their mother planet during the last 4.5 giga years of their existence. Some of them, some of them are perhaps parts of some uh, disinter uh, due to the disintegration. But the stationary orbit of uh, Uranus and Neptune is uh, 83,000 uh, uh, kilometers. So if you compare these two numbers, uh, you, you, they should be, uh, they should fall down on the surface, but they are on a relatively high orbit, as, as you can see. Moreover, if you uh, sketch, uh, for instance, the uh, uh, fast satellites of Uranus, so there are these 11 uh, fast satellites of Uranus, so you see that they are on a relatively large uh, or uh, high orbit. This is stationary orbit. And here there are two kinds of forces. Tidal forces, because it is below the stationary orbit, uh, acts in this direction. And above the stationary orbit, they act in this direction. But there are some tiny anti-gravity forces which have the same, uh, say, approximately size. And here they uh, act in opposite direction, while here they act in the same direction. So you see that these, uh, uh, the distance between these orbits are very small because of this, uh, say, uh, uh, opposite uh, forces. But here, the uh, say uh, distances are quite large. Uh, another example is, for instance, uh, slowdown of uh, Mercury rotation. Mercury was uh, uh, maybe. 10 million years closer uh, to the sun if uh, this local expansion hypothesis uh, holds. But if it was so, then uh, the 
tidal forces were much higher because they increase cubically with distance. So this could explain slow rotation of Mercury. Uh, moreover, uh, in the paper by Kolesnik, uh, you can find uh, this is uh, this concerns uh, Ma uh, Mercury, this Venus, and here is declination, and in his uh, here is right ascension. So you can see uh, from uh, the uh, that during the last uh, 250 years, the uh, uh, right ascension slightly increases. That uh, you can uh, uh, find some say quadratic curve, which uh, uh, could uh, say simulate this, this data. So this is another example uh, of, uh, mm, uh, the, uh, of this uh, phenomenon. Uh, Neptune was formed much closer to the sun than it is now, uh, uh, because uh, this also is, can be explained by uh, anti-gravity forces. Uh, there is some es estimate, and uh, there were several papers uh, which uh, that, for instance, uh, people were searching for some unknown planet, which uh, does changes in new Neptune orbits. You know that, for instance, in this way, Pluto was discovered, but later it was found that Pluto has too small mass to explain that. But uh, anti-gravity forces can explain this uh, quite easily. I would like to finish my lecture with classical example by Sir Eddington. Uh, assume that uh, we have two bodies of the same mass, and uh, they, the, the initial conditions are uh, such that that uh, you have circular orbit if you consider Newtonian mechanics. But in Newtonian mechanics, uh, uh, Newtonian mechanics assumes infinite speed of gravitational interaction. But we know that uh, the speed of gravitational interaction is finite. This means that the body, when it is here, body B, it is not influenced by the body A when it is here, but it is influenced by its previous, uh, previous position. The same story is here. So uh, we don't have two forces in equilibrium, but we have two forces which uh, uh, are not in equilibrium, and these forces uh, slightly increase the total orbital momentum and also the energy of the system. So in this way you get uh, these spiraling trajectories and uh, it shows that the uh, law of conservation of energy uh, holds only very approximately if you take into account very long time intervals and uh, I have about 10 examples in solar system. Uh, this uh, Newtonian mechanics can be modified to, uh, if this D is delay, if this D is delay, if it is zero, then you get standard uh, Newtonian system for two bodies. If this delay is positive, uh, then you have to solve a quite complicated uh, system of ordinary differential equations. And uh, I would like to uh, stop here. So thank you very much for your uh, 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 attention. <laughs>
how, uh, is, how is that measured? No, 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 this was this, was this formula. Uh, there are many papers on paleo rotations. Yes, I am not, of course, expert in this, but uh, this uh, formula is very uh, simple. This is, this is only this formula. Number of days time the length of the day. And this is the current value of the day. So if t is zero, then it is. Oh, and if it is not zero, if it is, say, uh, Devonian era, so then you subtract here some number. And this number is known from papers from paleo rotation, and this number is also known. So the, this, of course, uh, all these data are very sensitive, but they, uh, these Chinese, this is not my method, yes, this Chinese. I'll put the question differently. Um, imagine this, imagine the solar irradiance is completely equal all the time. There's, there are no seasons at all. Uh, how, do, how does the organism know that it should grow slower and faster in different times? I mean, we would not be able to measure the length of the year or the number of days in a year three billion years ago if there were no seasons or some... No, no, there, there were seasons, of course, uh, because the layers during the summer time are uh, larger than during the winter time, yes? So, so it depends on an interpretation. We have to... Inter yes, of, of course, but uh, some of these, uh, as you said, the moon was much... Uh, closer to the uh, Earth, yes? So you can see a typical lunar band. So I assume, yes, that this was uh, north and this was full, here it was full moon and it was again north and so on. But they have really uh, thousands of data. They estimated thousands uh, or they investigated thousands of data. Yes? So from that they know. Okay. Okay. I don't know you. You are chairman. Um, there's a quick comment on Mars. I mean, Mars is interesting because, as you correctly point out, the faint young sun problem is actually the same. This is the same for, story. For Mars. Yes. But the standard paradigm now goes into the direction of episodic melting, be it by impacts or yeah, uh, major yes. episodes of volcanic yeah. eruptions, which we know from the geological record uh, for yeah, Mars. Yeah. So, so again, this is interesting, but it, it might not be a watertight um, argument. No, no, there, there, no, no. There were, uh, of course, very large livers uh, close to those three volcanoes and uh, Olympus Mount. Yes, uh, they could uh, uh, arise due to some eruptions. Yes, but there are other areas where you have no volcanoes, so. The rivers could appear only if there was snow or uh, rain, it was raining or snowing. Yes. But which you could also get from, from CO2 emissions from those volcanoes. So you could get <coughs> this sort of enemy. Yes, yeah, yes. But uh, you, you can hardly explain 70, minus 73 <laughs> degrees, which I indicated. Yes. By greenhouse effects, I agree that 30 degrees, which we have on Earth, yes, but the Mars atmosphere uh, was, uh, the, the pressure was much lower than uh, on Earth, yes, because of uh, low gravity of Mars and so on. Yes. Final question from uh, Professor uh, Could you uh, comment once more on the physical origin of your uh, anti-gravity? Uh, you mean this uh, example by uh, Eddington? Okay, okay. It, it is very, very interesting. I discovered that uh, example, but later they, I found that uh, it was <laughs> discovered by Eddington uh, 100 years ago, yes, approximately. So assume that we have uh, Newtonian mechanics, then and two bodies of the same mass. So then the attractive force uh, is lie in one line and they are in equilibrium and so on. But since the speed of gravity is finite, then this body is not influenced by that body when it is here, but earlier because the information about position uh, of this body needs some time to, to reach the point A. So then uh, this uh, body is uh, attracted in this direction. And similarly, uh, symmetrically, this body is attracted in this direction. So then you have two forces which are not in equilibrium. If you have two forces which are not in equilibrium, then of course uh, you get increase of the uh, energy and uh, momentum. I only want to emphasize that all, not only the energy uh, of law, conservation of uh, energy does not hold or is slightly violated, but also the 
law of conservation of momentum. It, it is violated, but you must have long-term uh, measurements, yes? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you mean angular Sorry? When you say momentum, you mean angular momentum? Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, let's thank all the speakers in this very interesting and provocative session and also for the first session. Okay. Thank you.